What is up my friends and how's it going and welcome back to the 21st episode of our let's play series as Roma with your fellow comrade Summary. In the previous episode we managed to completely win the civil war against uh, the remaining faction of Mark Anthony uh, thereby conquering all of the Roman eastern settlements as well as pushing ourselves into Arabia Petraea conquering the city of Petra from the Nabataeans. However, in this part of the uh, campaign, in this episode, we will be taking the fight to the Ptolemies. And as mentioned in the previous episode, they have grown to quite a massive size. As you can see, uh, historically, they own just about Egypt and it's more or less just a rump state. However, uh, as per this game, they also own a lot of Arabia as it is. They also own Fazania, which makes for an interesting uh, confrontation against the Ptolemies. Uh, simultaneously, I will be attacking the Mauritanians. Uh, technically, in history, uh, Octavian um, kind of conquers uh, the Mauritanians after his conquest of Egypt. And, of course, having uh, said that, uh, as you can see, we are now the Roman Empire. And, in fact, a couple of other changes that I have made is that in the politics, the new uh, Gens Cornelia has been renamed to the Comitia Populi Tribune. And uh, kind of the same color as the Comitia Centuriata. And these two, uh, you know, assemblies or centuriates rather, were um, of the centuriates and the tribunes were kind of similar. So I guess it's kind of fine that they, ha they are sharing the same color as far as political, um, you know, uh, political uh, affiliation is concerned. However, with our characters, as you can see, we have gone ahead and renamed Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus into Gaius Julius Caesar Augustus, as is the title he took once he became the Imperator of Roma. However, without any further ado, let us quickly have a look at all of our provinces and all of the characters that we can level up. So, very quickly going to scroll through our increasingly long list of... Uh, um, of you know units as well as armies as well as governors and our economy is looking really good as you can see we are at about 6 million and we're making about 78,000 denarii per turn I would like for that to be a lot more but thankfully once we conquer Egypt we will get another S tier province added to our realm which means we can even further increase our economy and that being said and done uh, public order is a little bit of an issue as you can see we're not all just in the green. We are losing public order in several provinces. And that is mainly due to our influence being way too high. As you can see, we are outright tyrant over the Senate. That's giving a whopping minus 12 public order per turn. We, in a bit to contain our public order situation, are trying our level best to actually uh, reform all of our provinces to, um, to include more public order friendly buildings. However, that being said and done, let's quickly see we can hire any new characters as we definitely want to be doing that we have one guy who has joined the council of plebs so it should be around here and of course we are going to give him uh, governor abilities uh, we don't really need to focus on of course um, you know uh, the empire maintenance because we already have uh, the maximum uh, empire maintenance reduction as you can see it's already at zero um, while in Latium, let's have a very quick look at all of our um, all of our buildings. In Latium, we can finally build the final final uh, building. And over here, what I really want to build, not entirely sure. Um, I guess I could build a Horeum, which gives thirty percent wealth from agriculture, uh, which is actually going to be super massive because we have a lot of agricultural buildings a thousand another thousand and another thousand that's three thousand uh thirty percent of three thousand uh, almost another thousand then of course we have um we have the major settlement of fish which actually doesn't give any agricultural bonuses meanwhile the wine does give 420 apart from that uh, we don't have much else going on for us over here and of course yes this wine over here is another 1250 uh, which means we get close to another 1000 wealth and if you look at the overall wealth that is generated in Latium, we're looking at 
33,000 which equates to uh, 137,000 denarii return. So by adding another 1,000, you can say that we add another 3,000 or 4,000 rather in terms of income. So maybe the Horeum is the right choice. Apart from the Horeum, we could also build a stadium which does give uh, wealth from entertainment. Uh, however, I don't think that's as powerful as, of course, the Horeum. Apart from that, we can also build uh, the Basilica of Mercury, which gives 20% wealth from all sources. And I might actually be inclined to do that because that is way more powerful. So let's actually go ahead and build that. Um, well, let's have a quick look at all of our provinces. Meanwhile, Vasodonica, we are specking it up to be an auxiliary recruitment province. Um... Judea, we are going to quickly build that up. Meanwhile, in Arabia, uh, we are going to kind of dismantle this building so that we get that quick, um, you know, conversion and quick garrison, as is quite important. And as you can see, most of the extremities of my empire has a lot of military buildings. Um, that is intentional, rather. Now, over here, what I wanted to build was I actually wanted to build, I kind of forgot, but I dismantled a temple here. And I wanted to build a circus because that will actually give me public order. And uh, by building that, I get 15 public order. As you can see, we are building the circus here as well. And it will take time for all of it to convert. However, with that, all of the provinces have been built up as per how I would like it. Now, the very next thing I'd like to do is kind of move my legions uh, to, um, you know, into their correct provinces. And one of the tricks that I have shown many times before on this channel is that if you put an army right outside the settlement, like here in Genoa, uh, put it on patrol stance, put it in the port, as you can see, it'll still be in that patrol stance. So it can move quite a fair distance. And once it moves all the way to Roma, what you got to do is kind of disable... Um, the patrol stance and it gets a little bit more uh, movement range so that is definitely helpful in order to get your armies quickly across your realm uh, however yes i'm not going to be abusing that against the ai i don't recommend using abusing it uh, but i kind of use it to uh, kind of move my armies around my empire as quickly as i possibly can and uh, you can see we can do pretty much the same thing over here we have a legio for Macedonica, so I'm pretty much going to do that. Put it in the port over here. You can keep doing this for infinity. So basically, uh, all right, over here, what I really need to do is I kind of want to move uh, like your 19 all the way up north. So best way to do that, once again, patrol stands, put him in the port of Massilia and keep moving him so that he can quickly into either Vesontio, but I don't want to move to Vesontio. Uh, but instead, what I am going to do is move towards Senebum. Perfect. So as you can see, he managed to cross half of Gallia. Meanwhile, this army over here, Legia for Macedonica, can go into the port again, and I can pretty much do this indefinitely, keep moving them across indefinitely. So that is just incredibly powerful. So put him into the port once again, move him all the way towards Roma, as you can see, that army started out actually in Narbo Martius, but it is going to make its way across. Make sure to upgrade all of my cavalry to that level 3 speed. And uh, quickly going to move this army into the port. And uh, going to kind of repeat that for Legio 5 Alaude as well. Um, I really want to give these guys some Cretan archers, but I think the priority might be to send them down south into uh you know attacking Mauritania and instead by doing that I can actually um instead get a couple of Beleric slingers so let's actually go ahead and do that for these guys move Legio 5 and Laude down south and quickly move them towards Segentum deploy them into the port of Segentum go ahead and recruit those Romanized uh Beleric slingers which are these guys over there. so we have um, four Romanized Balearic Slingers. Apart from that, we are missing a couple of units. What are we missing? I'm missing a Ballista unit. So let's go ahead, recruit that Ballista unit. 
As you can see, slowly but surely, we are building up our army to full capacity. While over here, we have like your 21 Rapax. Uh, once again, we are going to up some spearmen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Four of these, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Equitanian swordsmen. Eight of these Gallic cavalry. Then finally, what we want to build are four of uh, Peltas type units or skirmisher type units so as far as armies are concerned and army management is concerned I think everything is fine for now so let us actually focus on the war against Egypt so uh, pretty much we have a lot going on for us over here we have to kind of attack Egypt kind of have to do really as quickly as possible I do not want to conquer the entirety of Arabia I just want to take the provinces or the regions in Arabia Petraea for myself and then focus on the historical borders of the Roman Empire. So uh, that being said and done, what I am going to do is I am going to try my level best to kind of, uh, you know, improve relationships with Muscat. Uh, Muscat is actually a very good faction to be friendly with. And that is kind of because um, of the fact that they have loyal as their status, which means they will most likely never attack us. So over here, what I'm basically doing is I'm trying to improve uh, their relationship with us by offering them payment. Uh, of course, in a teller total war, it's a lot easier because you can just simply offer a gift, which is the equivalent of a payment. However, in Rome 2, you kind of have to do a little bit of extra work, uh, basically their payment as you can see now they are neutral we're gonna keep doing this until they become quite friendly with us and uh, what we are also going to do is we are going to transfer over using the timber trade region sub mod uh, link is of course in the description as has been used for all of the episodes and uh, basically give them Arabia so make them the sole power in Arabia and eventually they can even join the war against the salute uh, sorry against the Ptolemies for us so uh, hopefully that'll be the case and of course we have to also keep in mind that the Ptolemies do have the Mamlakat Himyar as a subject. And of course the Ptolemies are also at war with the Parthians who are fairly friendly with us. Not entirely friendly. Um, can get a non-aggression so I'd rather do that. Uh, can't get a military alliance. They're not going to uh, you know, buy into that. So of course we're going to have a little bit of uh, problems as far as that concerned. Meanwhile we have a bunch of armies over here and we are going to march them Legio to Augusta into Egypt. And of course, we even have Legio 7 Augusta, and we are going to march, keep marching them into Egypt. Meanwhile, Legio 10 Germina under Octavian is also going to march into Egypt, so he's going to focus on the main conquest. Meanwhile, we have two legions over here Legio 13 Germina, Legio 5 Macedonica that will deal with the remnants of Egypt in Arabia. Meanwhile, all the way in the Western Front, uh, we do have Legio 10 Fratensis that has crossed. Uh, into the African uh, continent. We are going to liberate uh, these factions over here. We do have some really, really interesting Egyptian armies, as you can see over here. Judean archers, for some reason, have uh, bugged unit cards. They shouldn't, but they kind of do. And I don't know why that is. Uh, but that has to do maybe something with my mod. However, uh, nothing much I can do about that for now. Uh, meanwhile, um, we do have Legio 22 Valeria Victris, and we also have a Legio um, 12 Fulminata, and we also have Legio 14 Gemina under Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa. Um, and the idea over here is to kind of push into Libya as much as I can. But of course, they do have some formidable armies here as well. As you can see, um, they do have really good armies, pikemen. Even some little bolos, which is the equivalent of the Roman Ballistae. However, that being said and done, let us go ahead and quickly attack them. We do have a bit of a piracy situation, uh, you know, everywhere pretty much. We have some Illyrian pirates in the Adriatic Sea and we do have some Carthaginian pirates in the African Sea. So we are going to try to move our fleets across. We want to move our fleet as close as possible in order to attack them. Well, quick look at the garrison at Tyrus. It's pretty respectable, so I can move classes 1 Roma Victris to kind of deal with these Illyrian pirates over there. However, that being said and done, let us quickly begin our assault of Egypt. 
The way we can do that is we can either attack them directly, which will kind of call their satrapy into the war against us. Uh, but the best thing to do is to actually ask uh, the uh, Parthians if we can join the war. And they might not agree, so I'm actually going to offer them 10,000 denarii to join that war. And as you can see, um, you know, we are dropping as far as economy is concerned. But we really, really want to drop our influence. That is the main concern. And we can't really do that because a lot of characters we have over here... Uh, we cannot actually use them for political actions because we had used them a lot during the civil war. I would like to send people to organize games, but just look at that. It is 152,966 denarii per uh, per click. So definitely don't want to be doing that for a very long time to come. However, what I can do is quickly send Legio 13 Gemina to attack Adumatu. Uh, it's a pretty easy auto resolve. The Greek spearmen and... Uh, Really don't know what's going on with all of these uh, horrible unit cards. But I am going to peacefully occupy the settlement. And uh, very quickly, uh, what we will do is we will transfer this to Musket. So there we go. That region will be sold. Meanwhile, this army over here can't get uh, too far. So what we can do is actually push deeper into Hegra with Legio 5 Macedonica and of course they're going to have a little bit of some more unicard issues uh, which I am going to kind of resolve during the turn between turns so let's go ahead uh, we can peacefully occupy it but I don't think I need to what I am going to do is I'm going to raise Hegra so that I can quickly build it up I want to build it up to uh, something that will give me a lot of cultural conversion ASAP ASAP that being said and done, everything seems to be fine. Over here, let's have a quick look at the Western Front and uh, quickly attack Tiedemensi. We are going to quickly attack it. Um, and what we are going to do with Tiedemensi is kind of liberate them. And we do have a new faction over here that we can kind of uh, ask them to join the war against Egypt. Maybe they will not join, but perhaps if I pay them enough, what if I pay them an exorbitant fee? They will not join. But if I give them a trade, can I make them into a satrapy? No, I cannot. But maybe I can ask them to join the war against Egypt in this way. And I'm not going to ask them for money because I need them to have as much of their funds as they possibly can in order to you know, create respectable legions. And of course, I can also replenish in their territory, which is kind of great. Um, meanwhile, over here, I really want to break the deadlock. Uh, against these uh, armies however this army over here cannot reach Kyrene which means I can potentially attack this army over here uh, Kyrene on the other hand has very good garrison so definitely can go ahead and attack that army however without any further ado let us go ahead and quickly attack this army uh, meanwhile over here what I am going to do is I'm going to march uh, Legio 2 Valeria Victris gonna try to get rid of the Egyptian armies as quickly as I possibly can uh, move a Legio 12 Fulminata over there and move them down south the idea is to uh, double team the army in Ogilia and meanwhile with Legio 14 Marcus Vespinatius uh, Vipsanius uh, Agrippa we are going to go ahead and attack this army over here. They're going to stand and fight, and that is understandable. So really going to quick save over here and hop into the battle. But before I do that, I am going to resolve the unit card issue that we are facing. However, see you all guys in the battle to come. All right, welcome to the battle. Uh, our first battle against the Ptolemy faction. Uh, we are leading uh, Legio 14 Gemina under the command of... Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa all the way in the right flank and uh, really need to march out really quickly to meet uh, the Ptolemaic uh, army because they have a bunch of ballistae that will cause a lot of damage so pretty much we have to run into action um, and uh, pretty much what we have done over here is we have arranged our uh, it's new formation four uh, auxiliary spearmen on either flank uh, four of the auxiliary cohorts or sword infantry center and behind them we have our 10 legionaries arrayed in two lines as you can see 
Uh, meanwhile, we're moving our ballista just within range of the enemy. But still, we are not able to reach the enemy uh, range. So we decide to keep moving our troops ahead because uh, we are beginning to take a bit of casualty. And uh, we decide to leave our ballista behind when it gets within range of the enemy. Uh, initially in the battle, I decide to push my first cohort up, but then I realize the enemy ballista begins to target it as the first cohort is usually a magnet for all missile units. And so I withdraw my first cohort behind. And ideally what I want is I want the entire enemy to uh, engage my own army and begin the battle as quickly as possible so as to minimize the casualty. I am taking from the state that is in the center of the battle. As they are already firing at our units, uh, causing a bit of casualties over there. As you can see, 170. I've already lost 30 men off uh, the Gallic Spearmen over there. So things are not looking good for us uh, straight off the bat. Of course, uh, the Ptolemaic army is very professional. We have a decent amount of cavalry. However, we do have the cavalry superiority. Uh, but their cavalry quality is nothing to scoff at. And look at that. They have even the Basilica Ile, which is one of the best cavalry you can get as the Ptolemaic faction. Apart from that, the main threat is obviously going to be from their pikemen. Which they have the Kluruchoi, Thorakitai, Thalangatai. And now these guys are really badass pikemen. Uh, they are basically the equivalent of Thorax Bronze Shield Pikemen. So you really need to watch out for those guys. As you can see, they have quite a lot of these pikemen, which means... Uh, we are at a disadvantage in a toe-to-toe -to -toe kind of fight, so we really need to cover our way around the uh, pike phalanxes, and I will kind of display that in this battle. For a second over there, I stay really um, uh, dormant, and I kind of already issued orders for my first cohort to pull behind. Meanwhile, my ballista have taken a lot of casualties. They already lost three out of the six machines we have, which put us at a serious disadvantage uh, yet again against the enemy ballista. Still six for six. So definitely we're going to keep pushing up, keep pushing up ahead, keep pushing up ahead. And hope that the Ptolemies uh, begin to engage us. I begin to see some movement, which is a good sign, which means that the Ptolemy faction has begun its offensive against us. Uh, meanwhile, I notice on the left flank a bunch of cavalry uh, charging my own cavalry and on the right flank they are mimicking the same. So I decide to pull my cavalry back and begin uh, the encirclement. So here we go, beginning the encirclement. And over here we are lining ourselves this way. What I do is I use one cavalry from here to attack this and the other cavalry attack that. While this cavalry will attack the gap and this cavalry back around so it's a very good bunch of uh, circlement tactics over there by the cavalry uh, meanwhile on the right flank we are beginning to charge the enemy cavalry on either side which is great our spearmen uh, decide to align in a way facing the cavalry but we decide against it uh, decide that the cavalry is taken care of as both flanks they are uh, basically wavering already so we have completely dominated the enemy cavalry no longer have any threat from the enemy cavalry so our main focus is for the infantry um, meanwhile ballistae have uh, kind of abandoned uh, the ballistae so i have no idea what that is all about but uh, pretty much all of the enemy units are now trying to hold down my right flank i kind of ignore this uh, instead i'm focusing my cavalry on taking out their missile unit uh, however yeah i use my cavalry because taking care of their melee cavalry to deal with the yeah, missile cavalry so uh, we will have an advantage here because even though it says we are missile cavalry we are actually Gallic auxiliary cavalry which are really really good at melee but they do have precursor javelins which is why they are classified as missile cavalry however over here as you can see we are turning our uh, you know, uh, our Gallic spearmen to face against these enemy units and they, of course, they have a numerical advantage, which is why I've already started moving out. So really quickly, uh, really proactively moving uh, my core legionary cohorts to join the fighting. And the only core legionary cohort that's remaining is the first cohort, which will soon also join the battle. Meanwhile, I'm making use of some gaps that have been created in the front line. And over here, the same is happening on the right flank. So the idea is to encircle uh, these bunch of pikemen from either side and over here uh, take full advantage of uh, that encirclement 
So we are completely encircling the pikes all the way in the back. Our cavalry is dealing with their missile units. We're doing a pretty good job at uh, completely encircling the enemy army. But as you can see, we are really uh, hoofing it in this battle. Uh, we are really busy running our units haywire around trying to encircle it as quickly as we can. Here I decide that there's a hoplite unit, so I get my skirmisher units into a position where they throw their javelins into the unshielded side of this unit. Pretty much just waiting for them. So, and there we go. Massive damage over there. You can see a lot of casualties. A lot of these guys getting absolutely obliterated really fast. And uh, pretty much we take care of one very dangerous phalanx type unit. Uh, meanwhile, over here, the flanking procedure has begun. We are basically charging units on both sides. And the pikes are completely co confused as to which direction to face in order to deal with this. And as you can see already, the rightmost flank of the is completely surrounded. All that remains in this final cohort to join the fight. And while on the left flank, our cavalry has done well with this. And the enemy has decided to dedicate the spearmen towards them. So I just quickly pull my cavalry out. And one of the best ways to pull your cavalry out, instead of clicking, on the ground is to actually give them an order to attack it. So I've actually given them an order to keep chasing that unit and uh, that is the most efficient to pull out of an engagement. Meanwhile, our cavalry over here is not doing all that well. I mean, they are doing well, but they're not doing, uh, you know, as many casualties as I hoped they would be inflicting. And then spear unit has caught up to it and it's a Galatian uh, uh, Cleruchai uh, Doriforai, so they are actually really good against cavalry, They're very offensive spear units, so better to run away from them. And what better way to run from them than to charge right in the back of another Galatian Cleruchai Thorakitai. And by doing so, we have actually uh, made them waver and they will even rout. Uh, meanwhile, all the way over here in the center, you can see we are slowly encircling. Our own skirmishers have completely exhausted their missiles from this location into this location and the idea is to charge into the backs of the units. Now do not scoff while these are skirmishers they have really good melee stats 16 melee attack 21 melee defense 29 melee damage of which 9 is melee armor penetration so they can really do some serious damage and over here we have dealt with another pike unit by sandwiching it between two of our own units and over here on the right flank you can see slowly this encirclement is beginning to influence the morale of the units that are trapped in between. Meanwhile, Marcus Vespinatius Agrippa is busy uh, you know, uh, encouraging his troops to fight on and to completely uh, get rid of the units. And as you can see, they're already to out. Uh, the idea is to get Marcus Vespinatius Agrippa quickly in the fight. Meanwhile, our cavalry is not doing much over here besides uh, wiping out any of the remaining enemy missile units as is the uh, idea and over here we have some units that we are going to try to you know once again try to encircle the enemy units we got a couple of uh, our legionary cohorts to kind of move around uh, Sturian heavy auxiliaries and what they will do is they will charge into the rear of the spikes and cause some serious uh, morale penalty so uh, that is uh, very critical as you can see we already have the upper hand in this battle because of our maneuverability because of our maneuvering and straight over here you can see we are going to charge into the rear of the spike men and they are going to start wavering they are not going to be able to as many casual or deal or inflict as many kills as a pike man would if left un, uh, you know, unsurrounded pretty much over here the same thing has happened Asturian uh, 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 missile units are doing really good. 200 kills which is absolutely phenomenal and do have a very light sword they are not much of a threat meanwhile their right flank has completely collapsed uh, which leaves just a bunch of units over here some of them are still fighting and uh, they will not last long I mean, they are phalangitai they are starting to waver and uh, my own uh, auxiliary cavalry are busy just hurling their javelins but now I decide it's time to charge and to end this battle and with that the battle has ended but I continue the battle and I route out the entire Ptolemaic army and with that we managed to wipe out our first army of the Egyptians 
and it was a very very good and decisive victory uh, by Marcus Agrippa as you can see we lost only a 733 men meanwhile killing over 10 times the number of Egyptians and they did have a pike based army uh, which I kind of dealt with quite effectively a really really professional army but uh, we just simply outperformed them and I think uh, our cavalry edge really uh, did uh, turn the tide in our favor of course we are going to enslave all of the captives and uh, we can technically push towards uh, Egypt but what we can do is we can go back into the port of Kyrene instead and uh, basically just sit there for a turn so that we can replenish and then we can push towards Peritonian or Peritonian. Meanwhile, I have gone ahead and fixed up the uh, unit card issue. As you can see, uh, the unit cards are going to be quite fine. Um, basically, we need to see this army over here. As you can see, we have our uh, Judean archers now showing up uh, correctly. And of course, all of the other units have also been uh, properly adjusted. However, the main reason this is happening uh, as of now is because... Um, you know, there's a lot of modding going on with me right now uh, and uh, pretty much what's happening is that I have a lot of files that are currently a complete mess in my data folder um, and uh, nothing much I can do about that. Um, the reason being is because DVD at Impera 1.33 has already been released as most of you know. Uh, however, I have not, uh, you know, um, activated it yet because it will corrupt this campaign uh, save so I am still playing on Dividate Impera 1.32 however with the new Seleucid Empire campaign I will be playing with uh, the new Dividate Impera however that being said and done I think I am ready to go ahead and end this turn and I will see you all in the next turn when we are ready to keep pushing our offensive uh, against Egypt and keep taking away Arabia as well as uh, begin our conquest of Libya from the Egyptians. Hopefully be able to move into Fazania as well. However, that victory by Marcus uh, Agrippa has given me a lot of confidence to face the more uh, professional armies of Egypt. However, that being said and done, gonna go ahead, end the turn and I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, welcome to the next turn. We have a noble death. We have another noble death. And it is the leader of uh, Legio Augusta, so um, definitely want to hire. And you might be noticing a new unit over here, however, more on that later. Um, while we will take the general of the region over here and uh, have a slave rebellion imminent. However, let's quickly open up the notifications and see all of the natural causes. So, okay, we lost one guy in the capital. We lost another guy who was in charge of Legio 2 Augusta. Uh, quickly going to see if we have a nearby. Um, okay, we do have a champion nearby. So we can send him into Legio 2 Augusta. So let, let's send him in that direction. Okay. Meanwhile, um, let's see the third death is... This guy over here, and he has been placed by another general, which I do not want. So we are going to replace him with our own party member. Don't have anyone that we can replace him with. So basically, I'm going to see if I can marry off any characters. I can marry off this character. Let's quickly go ahead and marry off that character. And now we should have General Can. Uh, pretty much take charge of that legion over there. Right. Let's go ahead and upgrade him. Give him that. Perfect. And I don't really need to support uh, the east anymore. So I am going to send him westwards towards uh, Mauritania. However, before we go ahead and do that, let's have a quick look at all of our provinces. See what buildings we can level up. Of course, we are going to have a rebellion over here, and that is rather unfortunate, uh, but it is what it is. So we are going to try our level best in order to station an army over there that can uh, promptly react to the situation over there. So 
excellent and of course uh, this province has been completed so what i can do is actually just build a siege workshop over there perfect and with that all of my provinces have been built let's quickly look at all of our characters the ones we need to level and uh, we don't really need to level a lot uh, meanwhile a quick look at our characters okay can't really get any new characters a quick look at our influence it's still stuck at 76 we really really want to bring it down and nothing much i can do uh, as far as that is concerned um but what we can do over here is we kind of kind of can attack alexandria and while over here we can move this army legio 13 gemina towards Paraetonian. let's actually go ahead and attack them as you can see, I could reach them with that glitch, but I'm not going to do it. Meanwhile, a Legio 6 Ferrata can move all the way into Dyrrachium. Uh, kind of get garrisoned up over there. We are going to move a Legio 4 Macedonica into uh, Macedonica itself. And they go ahead and take all the auxiliary troops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 3, 4 spearmen. And 1, 2, four archers and i think i should be quite good with like your four macedonica so that is good to see what we are going to do is kind of try to move like your four macedonica uh into the port of athens or into the settlement of athens in order to help them uh with the public order however we're still going to get a rebellion over here but uh, i'm not too concerned about that uh, we are lacking a bit as far as archers are concerned. Uh, we haven't yet transferred them over, but there's nothing much to we can do over there. Meanwhile, what we are going to do, Legio 11, Claudia, is we're going to put them to the port. Actually, you know what? We're going to hold off on that for a bit. Um, well, because we're going to have a rebellion here as well. So let's actually move towards Aretium so that we can get that um, level 3 for the cavalry then put them back to the port of Genoa uh, actually go ahead and put them to the port so that I have increased movement range this way I can pretty much reinforce any region uh, within the province and we're going to do the same for Syria as well uh, we're going to put Legio 6 Ferrata into the port of Dyrrachium uh, meanwhile we do have a fleet that is way into the Adriatic in an attempt to attack the Illyrian pirates, get rid of the piracy problem once and for all. And over here we have a Legio 7 Claudia Pia Fidelis that we can actually move all the way into Macedonica as well. So what we're going to do, quickly move it towards Massilia, all the way to Genua gonna keep doing that gonna move this army out for a bit go ahead put them over there send them all the way to roma make sure to level up those cavalry this guy can go back into the pole excellent and there we go upgrade the cavalry disable the patrol stance move all the way towards Brindisium. Fantastic, and we can put the patrol stands back on to kind of help with that public order just a wee bit. Meanwhile, Legio 22 Diatoriana is looking pretty good. Uh, what we are missing are some skirmisher units as well as some cavalry, but uh, this is more or less an eastern region, so we are going to move it towards Narbomatius and then eventually start moving it across the empire to get some auxiliary troops from Galatia at Cappadocia. Meanwhile, the other legions are busy recruiting, so nothing much going on over there. And of course, we also have Legio 5 Alaudi that can move itself into the port of Carthago Nova. Uh, simultaneously, we can move Legio 3 Kyrineke to begin the invasion of Tingis and uh, take over Mauritania that is the goal and uh, can also move Legio 6 victors to take out Sega so let's go ahead and declare this war against them we're not going to call in our allies so quickly attack Sega we can auto resolve it 
89%, we are going to loot the settlement. Make sure to turn off the taxation. And one of the things about uh, replenishment I have learned is that if it is a port settlement, as you can see, we won't be able to replenish because we don't have the population class. But as soon as you conquer settlement, and especially if you loot it, I'm not sure if the others apply. But if you loot it and you put your army into the port, they will be able to replenish in the next turn. So pretty much going to do that and show to you guys in the next turn how that kind of works. Well, let's go ahead and dismantle the buildings over here. And what we can do now is quickly even attack Tingis. And we're going to attack it with Legio 9 Hispana. But we can't, so let's actually attack it with Legio 3 Kyrineke. And so while we attack it, we can move Legio 4 Hispana to kind of support over there. A pretty decent auto resolve, so let's just auto resolve it. Once again, we are going to loot the settlement. We're going to put back Legio 9 Hispana and we're going to put him in port so that he gets some little bit of extra movement range against, uh, you know, the enemies in the next turn. As you can see, he can quite as well move all the way to Rutabis. We're going to do pretty much the same for Legio 3 Karineke. Um, we're going to take that campaign movement range. That is super important as a Roman faction. Uh, we will need a lot of it in order to as quickly as we possibly can cross uh, the Empire. And same thing over here, we're going to put these guys into the port of Tingus and uh, really just build up all the buildings we can, demolish all the buildings we don't need. And uh, the war against the Mauritanians is looking rather good. Meanwhile, we have this army over here that's kind of stuck in the port of Cartagonova. They kind of have to attack Cartagonova in order to be free or at least need to attack and treat it. However, the AI doesn't have uh, that sense to do so. And I just noticed they have a massive army over here that could attack us and that could be problematic to say the least. So I should have actually moved Lega 3 Augusta to kind of deal with that army, but I didn't uh, actually notice that. So. We're going to move him into the port of Yol Caesarea regardless. And meanwhile, we are going to even attack these pirates over here. They're going to flee, but they're not going to be able to flee that far. And uh, we're going to be able to give chase to them and uh, pretty much wipe them out. Can auto resolve it and go ahead and slave them. Our fleet has kind of uh, got an army tradition and uh, can get that ramming bonus which is quite important we can also get the upkeep cost reduction and the campaign movement perfect and we're gonna put them into the port over here and hopefully try to improve the public order situation over there uh, so everything's looking fine over here one thing i did notice is that this egyptian army is trying to move eastwards because uh, i guess they kind of see the threat that's coming towards okila uh, but I think they're going to be a little bit late to that action. We're going to be able to take Ogilla with a pretty favorable auto resolve. So let's go ahead and move both of our armies towards Ogilla. Go ahead, attack it. It's not going to be a very favorable auto resolve. 76% is rather bad, but we can just peacefully occupy the settlement because it is Roman culture, which means we do get a fair bit of uh, replenishment going on for us over here. And we're going to. Uh, enable that patrol stance to just squeeze out a little bit more um, of our uh, replenishment. However, that being said, done. Let's quickly dismantle the buildings we don't need. I don't really want this building as well. Um, I do want basically have a look. See, yeah. Right, so okay, I do need this building, so let's convert it. It's gonna give me foreign population class, not that it matters, but it does give me a huge boost to my public order. Uh, meanwhile, this building over here, we can go ahead and dismantle. Uh, however, since they have left that, they might have left Garamantia open to conquest, which means I can sort of kind of move closer towards uh, Garama, or Garamantia as I called it. Um, this army can move back towards Garama, but that should make for a pretty interesting fight against them. Let's go ahead and deploy in a fortified stance. 
and uh, things are looking quite good as far as the overall map is concerned let's have a quick look as you can see we are pushing into egypt quite efficiently uh, meanwhile since we have given muscat this province we will be able be to welcome. trade with them you have my uh, attention. maybe even get my a defensive agreement with them maybe in a military alliance we can get a lot with them so let's actually do this they will not attack the Ptolemies. However, if I ask them to join the war against Ptolemies this fashion, then they will be able to. And uh, that might be a good thing to do. However, I'm not interested in that because I don't want the AI to kind of be stupid and get attacked by the Ptolemies. So what I am going to do is not a defensive agreement, just a non-aggression. Military access is always great. And I'm going to ask them for payment since they don't really have to uh, fight against the Ptolemies. And that being said and done, what we can do is now march Legio 13 Gemini all the way down south to Yatrib. We're going to keep repeating this process. Go ahead, attack Yatrib. Um, we're going to peacefully occupy the settlement. And we are going to give Yatrib once again to Muscat. So Muscat is really going to grow over here. And of course, uh, now the Ptolemies just have uh, two remaining uh, settlements over here. Uh, in Arabia, one is uh, Charmutas, which I am going to attack promptly with Legio 5 Macedonica. Once again, you can get a very favorable auto resolve. We are going to um, you know, loot the settlement and then we're going to put our army into the port for that bit of management. This should allow us even some extra movement towards hopefully Marib. And once we get Marib, then we're pretty much uh, taking out the Egyptians from Arabia. Uh, that being said and done, let's quickly uh, build up over here. And, uh, we can conversely even try to move down south to Ethiopia. And I might actually do that depending on what the situation kind of looks like over here. However, that being said and done, let's have a very quick look at all of our provinces. Things seem to be fine. And of course, some of our characters have come of age, but we are trying to get rid of our political influence. So we kind of have to uh, assassinate all of them. So let's quickly have a look and see who are these characters that we can assassinate. And uh, it doesn't seem like I can assassinate anyone. So pretty much nothing else to do in this turn. So we are going to uh, go ahead and end the turn. But before I do that, I kind of forgot I can actually push my offensive into Egypto. So are kind of going to have to do that and in order to do that uh, we have two armies over here uh, in Alexandria one protecting uh, Alexandria and one outside the settlement of Alexandria so we can pretty much uh, you know maximize our attack over here by kind of attacking Alexandria the auto resolve looks very good we can win that auto resolve but I am going to dedicate as many as I possibly can. This is 100%, so let's go ahead quickly get that. I always like those 100% auto resolves. And of course, I can even attack Memphis after that. Uh, let's have a very quick look at the auto resolve if it is about 90. And it kind of isn't. But I might be obliged to take it anyways. Let's have a very quick look. I will actually instead opt for moving a third army as close as possible. Let's go ahead, attack Alexandria, 92%. I'm happy with that. And with that, we have Alexandria. We are going to, um, you know, occupy the settlement, uh, loot it up. And of course, we're not going to turn off the taxation. We'll have a very quick look at all of our provinces, see the taxations, what's going on. Uh, we might have a taxation going on in Mauritania, Tingitana, and it doesn't seem like it, so that's good. But Egyptos, we definitely want to tax and definitely want to get some uh, governors in charge of Egyptos. So let's go ahead, quickly repair all of the buildings in Egyptos, dismantle the buildings we don't need. What we are going to do is put Imperator Augustus into the port of Alexandria. But before we go ahead and do that, I am very quickly going to replace him with a general and just a temporary general uh, for now. Reason being is that... I am actually going to um, kind of replace the general bodyguard unit. As some of you might have noticed, uh, there is a new general bodyguard unit that I have personally made for this mod. And it and I will explain more about it uh, later on. However, 
That being said and done, I could actually push towards Peritonian. So over here, I could... And you know what? I'm actually going to attack Peritonian over here because I can technically replenish with this army over here in the port as well. So let's go ahead and resolve that one. And uh, we are going to peacefully occupy the settlement. It is of Roman culture, so we don't really need to attack it, really. And I think replenishment-wise, we're looking quite good, so I don't really need to move into the port, but I uh, might as well for that extra movement range. And auxiliary defense, perfect. Go ahead, build that up over there. Sure to build up all these buildings, perfect. We have two legions over here, and uh, we're going to kind of uh, see how that uh, kind of works out in the next turn. Uh, Alright, with that, as you can see, we have entire control of the Mediterranean. And, uh, as you can see, our entire coastline is now completely around the Mediterranean, but there's more to go in this episode. We will wipe out the Ptolemies completely from the campaign map, and of course, we have the final settlement of the Mauritanians to take. However, that being said and done, I think I'm done with this turn, so I will see you all in the next turn. Alright, welcome to the next turn. Several things have happened. Uh, most August respected sensor, alright. Several things have happened during the end turn. We had a rebellious army that kind of uh, sacked Mediolanum. And uh, they didn't take over the settlement, however. But we do have Legio 11 Claudia over here that can uh, deal with the situation real quick. And... Uh, we could fight it, but I am just simply going to auto-resolve it. We have lost a unit by the looks of it. It's quickly, or maybe we haven't. Maybe it was just the fact that we don't have any archers in this unit. Go ahead, push our attack. The second auto-resolve is always better. And uh, that we have crushed the slave uprising and uh, putting them back into slavery. Meanwhile, let us also move... Uh, Claudia down south and are going to level him up give him some more campaign range movement which is the most important thing in my opinion as Roma um, gonna take some army traditions as well uh, meanwhile over here we have Legio 22 Deatoriana and uh, we are going to move him quickly across the entirety of our realm using the same trick um, that we have been using to get our armies to move eastward to complete their recruitment provinces and we have a lot of armies really but we aren't using all of them kind of do use all of them then you know make the campaign way too easy and uh, this is where i feel like uh, high limits of uh, you know the armies is rather a very bad thing as far as campaign experience is concerned um, so let's go ahead and put them up into the port. Meanwhile, Allegio 7, Claudia Pia Fidelis. Uh, can we actually move them across? Um, we can't, so we're just going to put them into Brunusium. Um While over here we have Legio 4 Macedonica. It's fully built, recruited up. We're going to move him all the way over there. We have another rebellion over here in Illyria, but it is a normal rebellion that will grow over time. However, it does give public order per turn. So I'm kind of inclined to let it kind of grow. So while well, what we can do is transfer over some units over there, bring back this uh, legion over here, Primogenia, we have Deatoriana as well as Claudia P. Fidelis. I guess with Primogenia, we're going to have sort of kind of like the same setup so we're gonna not have to any more units meanwhile we're gonna attack the illyrian pirates as well and they're retreating but they cannot retreat any further they're blocked over here and uh, it's gonna be easy, easy auto resolve so let's go ahead auto resolve that one and slave all of them dealt with the illyrian pirates go ahead and deploy ourselves in the port of yadera um, that being said, done. A quick look at all of our provinces. Um, as you can see, with Latium, we go ahead and build that basilica uh, in Mercury. Um, while over here, we can start building up regions as well. 
uh, quickly expect Egyptos to okay, uh, there we go excellent building up while over here keep building as much as we can um, dismantle this building so we get that immediate garrison uh, perfect excellent and over here we can build yet another temple uh, that was pretty much arabia petrea while in mauritania tingitana uh, we can uh, go ahead and repurpose a lot of the buildings go ahead there we go dismantle these buildings and want two temples over here to quickly convert it into roman culture and as you can see our legions have fully replenished because they were in the ports we have another legion over here that's kind of fully replenished because they were in the port and all the way over here in numidia as you can see that army kind of backstabbed us uh, not really backstabbed us but attacked Serta. they might even take out capsa but we are going to try our level best to march across as quickly as we can with legio 3 augusta as well as legio 6 victress a bit of a short uh, oversight over there that i didn't kind of notice that so we're gonna try to promptly deal with that meanwhile we are gonna attack rutabis a uh, pretty decent auto result but i can make it even better because i do have legio 9 hispana and just look at that campaign range movement which is why i emphasize on campaign range movement and now we have a very good auto resolve we're gonna take out rutabis which is the last remaining region within mauritania tingitana we're gonna once again deploy our army into the port meanwhile this army can't really march all the way back so um and this army actually has a lot more to replenish so i'm gonna put this army out of the settlement while put this army back into the port so that will replenish a lot more uh, go ahead repair all the buildings and excellent we are looking quite good over there meanwhile this army is still uh, pretty stuck uh, so we are going to send our fleet across in order to deal with that we're going to send him all the way to its agentum then once he kind of gets some more movement range and he might actually to get some more movement range we're going to move him towards Ebesus instead or I boss him uh, then we are going to launch our attack there uh, however, that being said and done, we can also deploy patrol stands with this army over here to help with its replenishment. Uh, they should pretty much replenish within one or two turns. However, our attention moves back to the east. And in the east, you can see uh, that we are in a position to keep pushing down south towards uh, Marib. And that's exactly what we're going to do. In the next turn, we can actually attack the settlement of Marib. Uh, which means we don't really need this army over here anymore instead what we can do is we can send this army to kind of attack um ptolemaeus teron however for now i'm not going to do that because what i actually want to do is to dismantle uh this building over here that will kind of give me a better garrison so as i said you want to kind of uh you know repair a building after you uh you know sack a settlement then you want to dismantle it so that you get an immediate garrison as you can see we have kind of done that with hegra uh, we are in the process of uh, now dismantling building the charmutas which means in the next turn it will have a pretty respectable garrison that being said and done i'm kind of trying to find that egyptian army it's still over here so no real threat uh, it's a pretty respectable army i must admit uh, which means it can pretty much take out any of these regions which kind of gives me uh increased incentive to kind of stay put within arabia petrea i don't want to repeat of what happened in serta it is rather embarrassing <laughs> to have lost that region but we will rectify the situation soon enough uh however yes back in libya we are going to have a quick look at what's going on over here uh i'm guessing that army is back towards garama kind of means we have to kind of push with both of our armies as much as we can and to have a little bit of casualties but nothing much of concern we can keep pushing and we also want to keep pushing with a leg of 12 fulminata 
Perfect. So we have both of our armies over here, which means next turn we can attack Garama from uh, both sides. However, our main focus is obviously going to be conquering the rest of Libya. Of course, we can also conquer Memphis. Uh, meanwhile, over here, I'm going to move Legia to Augusta to move down south towards Miros Hormos because the idea is going to be to use uh, Legio 10 Gemina uh, to attack Memphis. However, Ready for battle. I mean, I could even use them to attack Diospolis. I'm not entirely sure how far I can go down south, but let's just quickly just try to attack Ammonium. Took a bit of attrition by moving across the desert, but it is a Roman province, so we can just peacefully occupy it. Uh, go ahead, rebuild up uh, all of the buildings over there. And we should be able to replenish uh, in the next turn over there, as far as this thing is concerned. Now, I did uh, remove Octavian from this army, and I am going to redeploy him back into the army. And uh, the reason I actually moved him from the army is because I want to give him that new general unit that we have been looking at. So formerly he was the Legatus Legionis, which is, uh, or Legionis, which is the general of the legions. But right now he is going to be uh, having the Equites Singularis Augusti, which is basically the chosen cavalry of the emperor. I have modded it for this specific campaign. As you can see, it's a very auxiliary looking cavalry. If we kind of read up about it, let me go ahead and hire it firstly. But if you kind of read up upon it, uh, they were basically, um, you know, uh, the cavalry arm of the Praetorian Guard during the Principate period and uh, they escorted the Emperor on campaign structured with double strength so they are 200 men per unit uh, consisting of the best cavalry in the Roman Auxilia they fought in the same style and gear their emblem was the Scorpion you can't kind of read it due to the UI but their emblem was basically the Scorpion uh, which was emblazoned on their standards and shields however uh, I'm guessing that there is a longer write-up I can't exactly find out where. Here, here it is. And of course, that longer write-up, I have included a lot of historical facts about them. Um, basically, I've also given them the Mariposa Cavalry Entry. Uh, these guys are absolute badass. 41 armor, a total of 37 weapon damage, four of which is, uh, you know, uh, melee armor penetration, I believe. However, without any further ado, that being said and done, I can go ahead and attack Memphis with um, you know, uh, Octavian but maybe maybe I will not go ahead and do that uh, because I kind of want to you know, move Octavian as far south as I possibly can I'm not entirely sure how far south he can go uh, let's have a quick look over here Memphis is pretty I mean I do want to attack it as quickly as I can and Augustus can actually move all the way to Miss Hormos, which would be kind of better. So let us actually see if we have any Egyptian fleets in the area. We don't, so I'm actually going to use Legia 2 Augusta to attack Memphis. It's a very good auto-resolve. We go ahead, we are going to loot the settlement. Then I am going to send Legio 7 Augusta all the way down south to attack Diospolis. We do have a pirate fleet in the region, which means they could kind of take out Paratonian, but we'll have to see that. We do have a legion in the area, so not too much of a concern. Uh, meanwhile, the same goes for Alexandria. Let's go ahead and repair the settlements in Memphis. But with Alexandria, what I am going to do is I'm going to abandon it, and I am going to attack Mias Hormos. And uh, with Mias Hormos, what I am going to do is I am going to kind of fight this battle. Um, as you can see... Um, we do have some new unit cards that I made for the 1.33 patch uh, for uh, Egyptian garrison. Pretty respectable garrison, but they are not going to be able to fight up against um, Octavius' uh, legions. So we are going to get back shortly to that attack. Uh, however, for now, we're just going to have a very quick look at all of our provinces. Everything seems to be fine. And very quickly going to have a look at all of our characters. Once again, everything seems to be fine. We have a couple of characters that can be leveled up. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead, give him that replenishment. And uh, going to give 
Oh, that was really bad trade, so I'm going to get that out as quickly as I possibly can. Uh, and I have to wait a turn in order to do that. However, uh, nothing much I can do in regards to that. Let's quickly go to this view so I can see things a lot better. Uh, not much going on over here. Okay, we can get the cavalry experience. Uh, apart from that... Also have a Legio 3 Kyrineke. Um can give him some military traditions and also have a champion that's kinda making its way towards uh, military training a Legio 2 Gusta. Apart from that, a quick look at our politics to see if we can assassinate any characters. Um, want to keep dropping our influence as much as we can, however, it's gonna be a lot harder than expected. One of the things that I'm really struggling with is trying to kind of level up these characters because if I can rank them up, then that will also help their influence gain. Um, but I can't do that. However, for now, what we are going to do is we are going to create a new... Um, uh, we're going to create a new... We don't have a lot of fleets that we can do. So let's actually see. We must be at the maximum Imperium. Which means we are at the maximum for our fleets. So let's actually get a uh, politician over here. We're going to raise an army. And uh, we can give him a general of the legions. Go ahead, level him up. And deploy him in Alexandria as a governor general. And we are going to call him Pro Pre. Uh, Pro Consulare. Uh, of Egyptos, because technically Egyptos had Proconsul, and of course the spelling of Egyptos is going to be with an E, that was the Roman spelling, the U, Egyptos, okay there we go, and eventually of course we will be changing the settlement names as well, Proconsulare, uh, so we have a Proconsul, sorry not a Proconsulare, Proconsul of Egypt, and Egypt will also change as a province name. It will become Egyptos Proconsularis. And uh, exactly after that, uh, we are almost done conquering the entirety of Egypt. Uh, we just have another two more settlements, after which we can even spearhead our attack into Ethiopia, finally liberating uh, the rest of uh, the Ptolemy um, regions. We have about five over here. We have one final region in Arabia. And of course, one region, Zania, which totals up to seven regions. Of course, not five. We're going to have four over here because we are going to quick save over here. Hop into the battle where I can give you a quick look at the new unit of Octavian. Right, welcome to the Siege of Yusomos. We have aligned our legionary theatrical formation. We have our Gallic Spearmen on the flank, four units each. We have our uh, Batavian cohorts, the uh, extremely amazing LA cohorts uh, from Batavia itself, Germanic uh, unit, and of course we have our Syrian archers behind them. And on the flanks we have our skirmishers close behind, and these guys are absolutely, uh, you know, really versatile and really really cost effective, as you've seen in the previous battle. And on the flanks, of course, we have our famous Batavian cavalry, but the main focus, obviously. Even so, is not uh, uh, the uh, cohorts of Legia Ten Gem Gemina, but mainly it is Octavian's uh, bodyguard. Basically, the Equites Consulares. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Equites Cons Singularis. Sorry, Augusti, which basically is the chosen cavalry of the Emperor, and there it is. You can see them with their very distinct uh, Germanic look. Uh, they have a lot of. Uh, Tartan cloaks. Apart from that, they are having their standard, which is the scorpion, as you can see on their shield. And uh, maybe if I hit delete, it'll follow them. There we go, that's better. And as you can see, very nice look. And the main objective of this battle, it is a garrison battle, so it's really easy. Uh, the main objective is to get as many kills as possible to, to give it some experience. Uh, however, that being said and done, it is also a 200 a man strong so it's extremely powerful and straight off the bat uh, as the battle has progressed i have issued commands for it to attack uh, the fleet that has landed as mainly missile troops and i'm pretty much uh, going to be focusing on that side of the battle mainly 
not really bother too much of what happens on my front lines. I keep in mind these auxiliary troops so they can afford to take some casualties because it will be easy to replenish them. Uh, add to the fact that Mios Hormos is actually a uh, port settlement, which means I can stay in the port for some extra replenishment on the first turn of conquest. Uh, means that I'm not in danger as far as the front lines is concerned. Meanwhile, their uh, missile cavalry is being pelted by my own Syrian archers, and my Syrian archers should do a number on both of these cavalry units. On the left flank, we have our skirmisher units, and these are one of my favorite units in the whole Roman roster because they are absolutely badass. Just look at that already routing out the cavalry, and ouch, that looks painful. <laughs> Uh, regardless, uh, we have Octavius over here. He's not able to route this unit. He is winning uh, you know, decisively and they are losing decisively. But if they're not able to route, then you stand a chance of losing a couple of units. So the idea is to quickly change your course. And, uh, and as I mentioned before, the best way is to attack another unit. So basically, uh, I will issue a command for him to you know, ignore that unit and rather go back attack this unit and what's even more important is that this unit has begun firing at me so I really need to change course and uh, quickly attack this unit. This unit is going to run from me which means I will get an amazing charge into the rear of this unit. Let's have a quick look and see. They're going to run, they're not going to get far and boom there we go. Huge damage. Already they have lost 20, 30, 40 units so it was pretty, uh, pretty successful charge. And now I decide to ricochet off them back into these two but are running into me so they won't be able to brace for the charge. And of course they are also for as such. This unit kind of gets a little bit shielded because of that. Uh, but as you can see, uh, unit already has one chevron it's at 100. Okay. Meanwhile, on the front lines, I'm not really paying much attention here during this battle, but Everything can go pretty much automatic mode because it is a garrison unit and uh, they are not doing really well against it. But the minute I start to realize uh, that I can end the battle a lot quicker, I start encircling some units that are actually kind of free over here. Start to pincer the isolate. There are not that many, so it becomes quite easy to actually attack them. Meanwhile, over here, we have dealt with one of the skirmisher units. We Busy fighting off next unit as about 200 kills as of now, but kills are racking up a little bit slower than what I would like. Uh, but eventually, uh, at the end of the battle, I managed to get over a thousand kills uh, with this cavalry. But it's absolutely insane. I go on uh, pretty much routing out all of these units that are in full retreat, and uh, there are quite a lot of them, as you can see 92 here, 79 over there, 83 over there and 62 over there so uh, pretty much try to wrap them out. I pull out Octavian once again and I decide to charge once again so that I can break it once and for all and that was a very ferocious charge as you can see. So you definitely don't want your cavalry to stick in melee. Always try to pull them out if you can especially if you don't get an instant break and there we go we have the instant break which means uh, Augustus is free to try to attack some of the other and that's what he's going to do. Meanwhile, now my attention is finally on the front lines and I've started uh, to issue commands for the units to start in A uh, couple of these units do manage to take a bit of casualty because I'm not really paying attention and they're up against phalanx units. So that's not really good. However, I quickly realize this and I issue a battalion cavalry to gauge this phalanx unit on the flanks and the formation is huge massive penalty for their fighting ability as well as their morale they already started to uh, waver and meanwhile Octavian over here is still chasing around some units he's stuck at 241 and he ends up getting as I mentioned before, over a thousand kills one of the best ways to catch up to you is, uh, is to actually go into your Roman wedge formation and once you do that uh, you get some movement speed increase and as you almost uh, you know, are upon the retreating enemy, just disable it so that your units can spread out and kill them off as quickly as they can. I don't do it for this first unit, which is kind of a mistake because once again I'm trying to micro over here. 
so my attention is over here and uh, basically I try to circle this end as quickly as I can that's what's happening across the board excellent now this battle is not all that uh, you know uh, intense it's uh, I really didn't need to show it but I really wanted to show the new unit that I created for uh, the Emperor of course you can spam it but uh, you know I advise keeping it just for the Emperor so it's only gonna be Augustus Caesar who has it for this campaign now I've decided that I've killed enough of that unit so what I do is I try to chase down another unit and I decide this time I'm that wedge formation to move out. I noticed that uh, it's slow and of course uh, you know, they are tired as well that makes a big difference but as you can see the speed is 8 by getting that wedge formation the speed is 9 so you move just a little bit quicker which kind of helps you get within reach of this unit and as soon as you're within reach of this unit you can see him fan out and start attacking the team while the front line is almost completely circled which means we don't have much fighting left within us the entire enemy army is going to route and uh, just let's have a clear look of how this happens over here as soon as he approaches it i'm going to disengage it that way. kind of spread out like that go ahead and charge and get as many kills as they can as quickly as they can that's the objective while davian as see over here has racked up 330 kills and and it's increasing really fast so now i've decided he's had enough of this unit uh, there's not much to kill and basically when you're trying to kill as many units as you possibly can it doesn't make sense to linger around for the last couple of units instead what you should do is just go for bigger juicier targets because once these guys get far enough they can actually exit the battlefield and just because you wanted that last couple of kill especially this one guy, you're going to sacrifice uh, getting more kills on these other units. So, uh, and also another thing you want to do is kind of prioritize units that are closer to the exit than units that are near to you. But since these units were kind of on the way uh, to that unit and not out of the way, let's say if they were somewhere over here, I would have ignored them. But since they are on the way, I kind of attacked them. And quickly redirect my attention to the next unit that I need to attack. Now over here you can see there are just two units left. So it makes no sense. I'm just quickly going to go for the next unit. Once again I will get into my wedge formation I believe. And uh, not entirely sure if I did this with uh, precision. But I will get into wedge formation. Get close enough. Then get out of wedge formation. Uh, sometimes if I'm close enough I might not in wedge formation. Uh, as the animation to activate it and deactivate it does take a little bit of time. However, I have activated my fire at will and this kind of helps me get some more kills uh, while I approach uh, my enemy. And now, uh, pretty much wipe out this unit as well. For some reason, it stops <laughs> and kills another bunch of javelin. Uh, it's crazy. Big kill, big damage over there. And now I redirect my attention to the next unit that's over here. So pretty much I keep repeating that and as you can see uh, Octavian's already gained uh, 500 kills. So nothing much to see here apart from me wiping out all of these units. Uh, we have a bunch of units over here that I will kill. Then I will kill these units, these units and then I will kill this unit, this unit, this unit. Basically in order of how close they are to retreating from the battle. And as you can see I have quite a lot of units to kill this unit. This unit has 200. We have another 100. 44, we have 33, we have a lot, and there Augustus has once again up. He's now three uh, bronze chevrons. So, uh, yeah, pretty much with that, I kind of up. However, that being said and done, I'm gonna end the battle, and I will see you all in the campaign once I am done routing out all as many enemies as possible with this cavalry. And with that, down goes the settlement garrison of Maeus Hormos. Uh, as you can see, uh, Julius, oh sorry, Octavius, or Augustus Caesar, as he is right now known as. Uh, his unit managed to get 1,055 kills and in fact leveled up three ranks. And that's basically why 
I continued the battle in order to rout out the entire enemy as I really want to get him into triple gold chevron and we are going to once again loot the settlement of Neosormos and uh, a very quick look at these stats we can even upgrade him and uh, right now as you can see he has a lot of good uh, stats we have a really good melee attack melee uh, damage and everything uh, but of course we also want to get the uh, cavalry bonus for him uh, and of course we are going to put him up in port so that he that. can sort of kind of uh, replenish that is the idea uh, meanwhile, we are going to repair and dismantle all the buildings we don't need. And uh, since we have a bunch of things that we can do, is that we can actually hire two more Governor Generals. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, go ahead, give him that character. Of course, I can recruit as many uh, Equite Singularis Augusti, but I'm not going to do that because historically they were just one of the units. And I'm going to stick with that solely for the emperor uh, we might have a rebellion over here in egyptos in fact most likely will have a rebellion so we kind of have to watch out for that however what i am going to do is uh rename this guy's lictor of neos hormos might change actually depending on the name of the settlement itself and of course we have uh, the lictor of memphis excellent that I think I am ready to go ahead and end the turn and uh, pretty much we'll see you in the next turn when we are ready to continue our offensive and wipe out the, remain the remainder of Egyptos and uh, it doesn't seem like they have much fight left in them uh, although we could be uh, completely uh, taken by surprise if in fact uh, they do have uh, some really um, uh, big armies down south over here in Ethiopia. However, let's move our spy over there as well. Uh, we can increase the speed. Uh, let's see if we have another dignitary that we can hire. We can. And uh, definitely want this uh, tax rate and cultural guy. However, just quickly going to have a look at our other dignitaries that are currently in the region. This guy is more about a cultural conversion uh, than anything else. What about this guy? He is also cultural conversion so i don't really need him here anymore i mean our cultural conversion is happening quite good so i might just start to kind of move them towards arabia uh, petraea uh, in order to kind of uh, culturally convert that into roman as you can see the cultural conversion is pretty fast but uh, at the same time it's not happening as fast as i would like it to happen meanwhile over here we're gonna recruit a dignitary we can get this commercial uh, stimulation guy it's pretty good however tax rate is far superior so we are going to go ahead and recruit the tax rate fellow we're going to deploy him right in front of the pyramids of giza uh however that being said and done i think i am done to uh, and ready to end this turn and i will see you all in the next turn when i am ready to take the fight and take out garama keep pushing into ethiopia take out their final settlement in arabia as well as uh, you know, uh, deal with this uh, Mauritanian army, Serta. All right, welcome to the next turn. We have a rebellion, and it's happened at Mios Hormos, right next to Tavius's army, uh, which is kind of a good thing for us because it is a regular rebellion, which means it will help with our public order a fair bit. Meanwhile, let's move Legio 7 or Legio 8 Augusta to attack Diospolis. We can easily loot the settlement as well because we don't have to worry about public order. Um, I'll dismantle these buildings. Uh, go ahead. Actually, I don't need to. I need to dismantle that one to get that quick garrison. I don't need to do it for the rest. And uh, we are going to build up uh, our agricultural sorry our industrial uh, capacity this province as well as our commercial so egyptos is going to be an industrial slash commercial uh, uh province meanwhile over here the objective is to move legio to augusta to kind of garrison meos hormos and uh, take charge of that uh, what we are going to do with legio 8 augusta is move it out of Diospolis and recruit another uh lictor so let's go ahead, recruit that Lictor in Diospolis. 
are going to rename him to To Deus Polis. There we go. Things are looking quite good as far as that is concerned. And of course what we can do is we can disable the Bread and Games Edict all the way in Syria and instead give the Commercial Stimulation Edict for Egyptos. Things are looking quite good. Meanwhile, we can Legio 13 Gemina towards Paratonian in order to protect the settlement from any pirates as we will have a bunch of pirates to deal with um, in this region. However, that being said and done, let's quickly try to even build up here. Excellent. While over here we do have this will give second class citizens, which I don't really want. Uh, can get that building, which gives immigration rather. Let's kind of focus on that. Quick look at all of our provinces. As you can see, Charmotas will have a decent garrison now. So I can go ahead and build up it into the second uh, le level of building, which will give it even more garrison. So. Uh, and it only takes one turn to do that, so that is the power of kind of dealing with it. Meanwhile, over here, we do have another rebellion that's happening all the way over here in Tingis. But we're going to move our legion all the way up north in order to kind of replenish. Meanwhile, this other legion has also kind of uh, replenished. So we are going to keep moving them up. Um, and uh, over here, we don't have any real threat, so can quickly just build it up and we're going to keep looking at all of our provinces uh, just kind of trying our level best to level things up go ahead build that amphitheater over there to help with that public order situation um, while everything else across the realm looks quite good we can build that final slave trader over there and i'm pretty happy with the buildings for now uh, so let's have a very quick look at our armies. Um, but before we go ahead and do that, we can send our legions to deal with this uh, Mauritanian army over here. It's not going to be a very good auto result, but we do have two legions in the area, so we can send them as close as possible to kind of reinforce, and hopefully they should be able to, which gives it a very good auto resolve of 83. And uh, are going to... Uh, just occupy, peacefully occupy the settlement. We uh, haven't really lost minutes. So that is, of course, great. We have a Legio 9 Hispana and Legio 3 Kyrineke, which I am going to replace with some Numidian type auxiliary. So, yeah. So, once again, we are in complete control. The Mauritanians do have a last remaining army over here. And I do have a fleet that's nearby that I can bring really close in order to engage with them. And I'm going to attack them in the next turn when I have enough campaign in order to do so. Maybe I might attack them right now. They might not be able to get far away. And uh, that was the wrong move. I actually wanted to attack with the fleet instead. Let's see. It's a decent auto resolve. I hope I don't lose any units. And we have wiped out the Mauritanians at long last. We're going to move Legio 5 Alaude back into the port here. Second door. Excellent. And we're going to move classes 2 Italic after rocks into the port of Agrigentum or even Syracuse um, in order to help with the public order situation over there. Uh, that being said and done, I think I'm ready to end the turn. But before I do that, I do remember I can actually attack Marib. Hopefully they don't have an army over there. So let's go ahead. A decent auto resolve. Go ahead, attack Marib. We're going to peacefully occupy the settlement. Then we are going to send it over to Muscat. Who I think might have actually joined the war against Egypt. Doesn't seem like they have. Um... Uh, of course, they could be in a war against Eudaemon, but we'll have to see that for ourselves in the next couple of turns. However, that being said and done, maybe I can 
keep moving Tavian all the way south towards Ptolemy's Tehran because I want to continue the conquest with him. And so we're going to keep moving him down south towards uh, Ptolemy's Tehran. Meanwhile, over here, this uh, rebellion could attack me as Hormos. Uh, keep in mind, the garrison is not uh, full strength. So what I am going to do is instead move Legia 5 Macedonica, which was historically in the province of Egypt and was the longest lasting legion of the Roman Empire. Um, that is the classical Roman Empire, of course, not the Byzantine Empire. And uh, they are going to pretty much uh, keep an eye over the rebellion situation over there. Meanwhile, Legia 2 Augusta can actually move into Arabia Petraea instead. And uh, speaking of Legia 2 Augusta, we even have the um, commander or the champion that can go ahead and keep uh, you know, training the army over there. However, we do have a pirate fleet over here that could attack Charmutas. However, I think we have a decent garrison that can kind of deal with that situation should they decide to attack us over there. Uh, classes 2 Italica Ferox has leveled up as far as a commander is concerned. So let's go ahead, give him some abilities, give him some public order abilities as well, as well as anything that will improve uh, the fleet. So very quick look over here. And... What do we have? Uh, yes, let's go ahead and give him that ability. And with that, of course, I also almost forgot we can attack uh, Garama. So let's go ahead and keep pushing and attacking Garama. Um, we have one legion over there. Not a very good auto resolve. It's against us. We have another legion that's going to move in to support. And the auto resolve is looking a little bit better, but we do have. Legio 10 for 10 is also in the region that is going to pretty much attack this army over here. should be 100% which will kind of help our auto resolve just a little bit more. Now we should have a decent enough auto resolve and by decent 84% is really really good. So let's go ahead and we are going to peacefully occupy this settlement and in the turns to come we are going to sell it off to the Tiedemincy and uh, give over Fizania to the TNC. So now all that remains under the control of the Ptolemies is Ethiopia. And uh, as such, we will be taking over the settlement next couple of turns. All right, as you can see, we have actually won the campaign. And uh, of course, I pretty much you guys can see the end scene credits, but I'm pretty much going to continue the campaign until I conquer the Roman Empire at its extreme uh, you know, size because the cinematic of Romans versus the uh, you know, most uh, notorious enemies, uh, the barbarians. And yeah, pretty much uh, with that, I can say the campaign is more or less concluded. We have some really small factions now to kind of uh, face off against. We have to, of course, uh, invade Britannia. Gratia, Noricum, and of course we have to also take out Pannonia, Dacia, as well as Mesopotamia from the Parthians. So that should be interesting fight against the Parthians. However, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to cut the cinematic over here, and I will see you all in the next turn. Right, as you can see over here, uh, we can simply continue the campaign. And uh, some characters, and the rebellion is important. It's in Sicilia, so unfortunately, we'll have to kind of deal with that as quickly as we can. So let us actually get an army cross into Sicilia as quickly as we can. We can get a Legio Six Victress as well to the region, and uh, we can even move. Legio Fratensis to the region. So let's actually move our armies back uh, towards all of their locations. Fulminata, okay, we have Valeria Victris, can move westwards. So, um, while we have Legio 6 Victris, I'm gonna move him towards the old Caesarea. And uh, pretty much, I think that's uh, looking good for now. Uh, over here, we're taking a little bit of attrition, but I'm going to move my fleet close by. And uh, that should reduce my income a bit, but uh, we should be able to 
a key to supply that fleet. And uh, we are going to transfer over Garama to Tidamincy. And uh, they actually lack money for the transaction, so we're going to give them a bunch of money My to friend, improve their relationships with us, as well as make them uh, able to afford uh, buying the settlement, which is technically uh, you know, getting our money back from them. The so that's about three. I am of course, this episode is a little bit longer, but we did have a very formidable uh, Ptolemy words. dynasty that we had to overcome. And uh, of and course, uh, you just need to see if I can pretty much sell them the province right now. They still lack money for the transaction. So I am going to give them at least four or five more of these. Um, you know, gifts so that they can afford the to get the province of Xenia. Of course, historically, Romans didn't control this. However, the Garamantians in the region were fairly friendly with the Ro Romans. Um, and uh, they kind of had to be because they were in no position to kind of um, you know, take them on head on. However, that's about it. I think I should be able to now transfer the province. They will pay me 20,000. Uh, Dinari for that uh, region however kind of mismanaged over here so you're going to take a bit of attrition in the desert but we're going to move quickly into Ogila in turns to come let's have a quick look at our provinces and try to build up everything that we can build up while over here we want to build one that gives more growth uh, go ahead build up all of the provinces and here what we want to do is build that up and also want to build I believe this gives 40 wealth from industry so it might be a good thing to build that up as well um okay perfect up, up there shrine of jupiter keep increasing things excellent right um shrine of jupiter can be built here again we are trying as quickly as we can to convert Mauritania Tingtana into Roman culture. Excellent. And the rebellion in Illyria has almost done their public order benefit, so I might have to deal with them soon enough. And uh, since we have looked at all of our provinces, let's have a quick look at any of the characters that we can level up and can't. So what I am going to do is instead uh, focus a little bit on politics. And, uh, I believe we have this character over here. She's a female character, so we're going to focus on gravitas as well as uh, diplomatic bonuses. As well as we can even go for the empire maintenance just in case any of our characters with the empire maintenance uh, bonuses kind of dies. And we're going to give her Gravitas abilities as well in order to keep improving the Gravitas and kind of drop our influence which is stuck at 76 I must say. Uh, but what we are going to do is quickly see if we can marry off any of our characters. Can kind of marry off this character so let's go ahead and marry it off. Um, meanwhile we can see if we can have some other characters that we can marry off and uh, from the Council of Plebs have this character over here that can marry off so we're gonna do that in the next turn or so have two characters over here that can marry we have another character three four so we really need to marry off a lot of characters in order to grow the size of our political party and that's pretty much what i'm going to be doing in the turn between turns in order to promote that uh, drop in influence because we really really need to drop our influence in order to kind of prove our public order situation uh, however that being said and done um, let's quickly have a look at the situation egyptos uh, things are looking pretty good so what i am going to do is keep legio 5 macedonica over there meanwhile a legio 8 augusta can move two words antiochia don't need him anymore in Egyptos. Uh, and we have even Legio 2 Augusta that can move towards Arabia Petraea. And of course, uh, down south over here, we have Octavius himself, Augustus himself. I can attack Ptolemaeus Tehran, should be quite 
easy auto resolve so let us just simply auto resolve that i just don't have much time left for the episode we are going to loot the settlement and deploy uh, augustus into the port in order to get that replenishment we're gonna hold on to ptolemaeus teron because historically i believe he was roman as well quickly gonna dismantle all the buildings we don't need meanwhile over here with legia 13 gemina we are going to march a little bit down south see if we can actually attack the mamlakatin Imiar. and it seems like they don't have an army over there so can kind of just take over the settlement should be a reasonable auto resolve so let's go ahead uh quickly auto resolve that one uh, once again we are going to loot the settlement and we are going to stay in the port of eudaemon and then we are eventually going to transfer it over to muscat and as you can see um we have completely uh, the egyptian presence in the Arabian peninsula and of course we are looking a very nice we control the entirety of of course uh the tree sea and uh i would say so far the campaign's look really good however with that i think i am done with this turn of course i have to manage a couple more armies there are some over here we have legio uh 22 uh diatoriana that has to make its way across into um asia so let's go ahead and do that Meanwhile, we also have Legio 7 Claudia Pia Fidelis, which we are going to move towards Apollonia and take four Grecian archers. So we have that Claudia Pia Fidelis. Meanwhile, we're going to move Legio 22 Prime Genea uh, all the way here and uh, try our level best to kind of. Uh, get some Gallic auxiliary troops, so we're gonna move him all the way to Gergovia. While we also have Legio 11 Claudia, we can move to Port of Colosseum, march towards Macedonica in order to get some more uh, units. And uh, everything's looking fine as far as that's concerned, so I'm gonna go ahead, end the turn, and I will see you all in the next turn, which will most likely uh, be our final turn all right welcome to the next turn we are going to go for the tax collectors several characters have returned from mission we have a rebellion and an imen imminent slave revolt that is in Taraconensis. Uh, however not entirely sure how i can resolve that situation to be honest um uh, what I am going to do is because I'm not sure entirely where this rebellion will arise, so I'm just going to move Legio 9 Spana towards Arasilum. Hopes that uh, the rebellion doesn't happen all the way to Viroveska. Uh, that's actually quite problematic. Um, however, over here, we are nearly done with the rebellion have just one more turn before they start to actually give public order penalties however over here we have a rebellion that will kind of and uh, meanwhile we do have a rebellion that's happened near Sinop which we are going to send our legion in that direction meanwhile in Illyria we are ready to attack this rebe rebel army so let's go ahead attack them and uh, we are going to enslave all the captives. We don't really care. And we have like your know, six Farata doing quite well. Uh, so things are looking quite good over there. As far as that is concerned, we are going to uh, deploy them into the port here in order to help that public order in Ibericum. Uh, While over here, we have Legio 22 Diatoriana that's ready to move into Asia. And very soon we'll be able to get our full legion over there. Uh, meanwhile, all the way in Arabia, we are slowly marching back with Legio 13 Gemini that we're going to put into the port of Charmutas in an attempt to kind of uh, allow them to move a lot in the coming turn. And uh, meanwhile, we're going to send both of our dignitaries to Arabia Petrea in order to culturally convert the province so we should have a very good cultural conversion now 
86 influence 3.3 per turn uh, which means in about 5 to 10 turns we should have Roman culture over there meanwhile in uh, Egyptus itself uh, we are just about one turn away from getting Roman culture going up and running over there we are going to build up all of our uh, provinces so let's actually go ahead and do that um, right um, don't really this I can build that instead and Excellent. Right, we can build up over there in Latium. This up as well. Build that and that. That. Building up. Excellent. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. We can even upgrade main settlement over there. And finally, having a look at the rebellion over here, as I mentioned, I have one more turn for that public order to kind of kick in. So I am going to kind of wait on that. Uh, meanwhile, uh, just having a quick look at all of our provinces, uh, Asia is really suffering in terms of public order. And uh, it's going to keep suffering because we have really limited uh, what we can do as far as public order is concerned. Meanwhile, turn off the taxation in Ethiopia. Uh, we have got a decent sized garrison now, Ptolemy's Terron, which means uh, this pirate fleet, which is severely depleted, is not going to be much of a nuisance. Instead, what we are going to do is we're going to attack the settlement of Medevi with Octavius himself, and uh, it's going to be an easy auto resolve, so let's auto resolve that one. And what we are also going to do is we are going to liberate the faction and uh, since we have done that actually move all the way to axum we'll be able to replenish and in the next turn we should be able to in, in fact take out the settlement of axum meanwhile over here what we are going to do is we're gonna ask the medium to um, maybe will they become a satrap join the war the against ptolemies maybe pay them a little Nah, they will not. But I can make them uh, join the war with a trade agreement. This should keep them fairly loyal, so they will never uh, betray me. Instead, what I am going to do is move my spy down south. Get a line of sight over there. Meanwhile, move this other spy all the way up north. In order to deal with that. Apart from that, we have an army over here. Uh, Legio 22 Primigenia that we need to hire some Gallic uh, Auxilia. So we are going to move him towards Gergovia. And we also have Legio 21 Rapax uh, that is finally kind of made up. We can put him into Narbomatius, which should help with the public order situation over there. We can get uh, the legion as well, one, two, three, five, six, seven, nine, as well as the eagle cohort. And apart from that, we can also get baggage train over there, which means all we have left is a balliste as well as some missile units. Meanwhile, over here, we have something completely interesting. We have Legio 1 Italica. This is the first imperial legion of its kind, as you can see. Unit cards kind of show or disclose that it has different shields. And uh, they will kind of partake in the conquest of Britannia, which will happen in the next episode. But for now, uh, what I am going to do with them is I am going to pretty much march them all the way down south in order to get some Grecian archers. While over here we have a Legio 11 Claudia, um, which I guess I need to get some Grecian archers with that. So we're going to move him down towards Phasilus and quickly up some Grecian archers. And with that, we have completed our build with that. We don't have uh, much more left to do this turn, apart from the fact we're just quickly going to look at all of the characters that can level up. We have a character over here that can level up. Go ahead, give him some... You know what? I'm actually going to replace him since I don't really need him. 
instead I can get another character that's completely in a better position even give him a better fleet and uh, this guy should be a lot better which means public order situation should improve significantly we're gonna have a quick look at our politics um, very quickly hire this candidate as well we're gonna make some of these candidates in charge of armies in order to help reduce our influence as you can see our influence is very close to being reduced so that was off the council plebis so let's go ahead and find him should be here since uh, we do have that ac academy in roma get some really good abilities so let's go ahead now uh, quickly get many of our abilities as we possibly can also focusing on that army upkeep reduction as well as all of that and of course we have a movement speed that we want to improve on and uh, pretty much we're going to get the campaign range movement to its maximum and we are going to deploy him probably in Mediolanum that is the idea right actually because i want him to be in charge of parthia the legion of parthia i'm actually going to deploy him all the way here should be here let's raise army give him correct unit general of the legion put him up over there go ahead and recruit legia to parthica should be somewhere down south over here there we go have Legia 2 Parthica. Maybe and Legia 1 has a Parthica version. Not entirely sure. One, two, it picks. No, I think we just have Legia 2 Parthica. So let's go ahead and get Legia 2 Parthica. So, there we go. Alright, sorry about that. But the game kind of crashed when I tried to recruit Legia 2 Parthica. So we're going to try that again. Hopefully it doesn't crash this time. And it didn't so that's great let's go ahead and recruit them as well as get that baggage train as we definitely need that and let's go ahead and be just like part the car there we go so perfect uh pretty happy with that um this part the car yes I spelled it correctly so we are going to kind of use our uh characters in order to um Ah uh, yes, this thing happened again as well. So pretty much just going to uh, place this guy with, of course, one of our other generals. You can go ahead. Um, sorry. Let's go ahead, hire him, give him a better fleet. Yes. Okay, things are looking good over there. But of course, we can level up some more characters. So let's kind of do that. We can get. All of these abilities which will increase our taxation as well and i think with that we are done and of course uh, all the way down south in egyptos or ethiopia to be more precise uh we, i had to replay everything so Please kind of um, no, it's creating a bit of nuisance uh, but that's my not a big deal. Of course, uh, you know, this episode has been quite long and I am going to you know, end the episode very shortly. Um, but in the episode between episodes, I'm going to attack Axum and hand it over to the Kushites. And uh, meanwhile, over here, we do have an Egyptian army uh, that could make its way towards Petra. Petra is quite well defended, but of course, Roman garrisons aren't as good as, uh, you know, uh, Hellenic garrison so that could be a problem but overall uh, things are looking good uh, we have given the entirety of Arabia to uh, the Muscat faction uh, meanwhile the idea is to give uh, you know, the entirety of Ethiopia except for Ptolemaeus Theron to the Kushites and of course Fazania has gone to Tidemensi and uh, pretty much with that as you can see our Roman Empire is starting to look a lot like its maximum extent uh, we do have of course Britannia to invade 
We have Raetia, Norcum, some of the eastern or western rather Germanic uh, regions, Thracia, Edmoetia, Pannonia, Dacia, as well as Mesopotamia to go. So there is still quite a little bit left in this series. And I do hope you all enjoy the series and continue watching the series, even though it is pretty much all but done. And uh, so I thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And if you like the video, then like the video. And don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more. Peace and love.